anything being comical? No, seriously, I did. I looked everything over. But you didn't know that there were two filters? I did not. Did you read the instructions manual? No. Oh, that makes me nervous. <laughs> Hey guys, so today I'm going to be installing this uh, dishwasher that we just got. This is not a how-to video, this is a do-it-yourself video because I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. I have never installed a dishwasher before, but I am going to be doing it myself. I'm going to get started on this. This is a, uh, a Janair dishwasher, never heard of Janair. This dishwasher actually costs about $1,200 to $1,300 brand new, but uh, if there is one piece of advice that I can give you on this, Never buy something new from the store. We went to uh, Sears Outlet and we got this uh, dishwasher for less than 500 bucks. And uh, we also got our range from Sears Outlet. Uh, if you buy from Sears Outlet, do not order online for home delivery. I would actually go to the Sears Outlet and uh, purchase it on site and bring it home. When we ordered that range, we ordered it from I don't even know where, another state. And the problem is, is that the range never showed up. And it took us about three or four months working with Sears until they finally just sent us a brand new version of the scratch and dent range that we had ordered from uh, their Sears Outlet store. If you order from Sears Outlet, you can get some great deals. Um, they're usually scratch and dent. This is brand new, it's got a couple dents on the front. We have two boys, so the fact that there are already dents on it just makes it feel a little more homey. Definitely use Sears Outlet just don't order online. I've heard horrendous reviews from them shipping things, and we had a horrible experience. I mean, of course, they, they eventually took care of it with a brand new range, so I can't complain that much, but the timing was uh, way below par. Anyway, so this dishwasher, the reason why we went with this one, mainly has to do with the decibel rating. We have an open floor plan in our house, so we wanted the quietest dishwasher that we could afford for our money, um, and our budget was 500 bucks. The dishwasher is real pretty on the inside. Stainless steel. It's got some little uh, thingies here with a picture of a wine glass. It's got a lot of moving parts in it. This is Shauna's department, not mine. And it's got some stuffing. We'll figure out what to do with that in a little bit. It's a pretty nice dishwasher. I like, one of the things I love about this particular Tenere is how sturdy and smooth this rolls out. A lot of dishwashers have the little tracks with the little wheels and they always fall off the tracks. This is like pretty solid. Just the solid feel of this dishwasher combined with the uh, decibel rating and um, we wanted something stainless steel to match our other appliances. And, and actually, our refrigerator was a scratch and dent from Lowe's. So we haven't paid full price for any of the appliances we have. If we did, it would have cost thousands of dollars where we probably got all of our appliances for maybe 2,500 bucks, and they're, they're high end. And like I said, scratch and dent, couple boys, couple weeks, it would look the same. So doesn't really matter. So I'm going to go ahead and start installing this. Um, I will say that if you buy a dishwasher, make sure you know how you're going to hook it up because the dishwashers don't just come with all the extra parts that you need. If you're going to have your dishwasher hardwired in, um, it, it pretty much comes ready for that. But if you're going to plug it in, you need to actually buy a dishwasher power cord. You can get these at your local hardware store in the appliance section. Make sure that it says dishwasher on it. Get one of these. The other thing that you're going to need is, and it, it'll come as a kit, but your water connection. Um, you can buy a universal kit. Inside the kit, you'll, you'll get all sorts of little different fittings. I think I've got a few more up here. I don't know what these fittings are for, but I'm guessing they're not for our dishwasher, so it doesn't really matter. It's got a nice little elbow piece in there. But it comes with a bunch of different fittings. Just pick the fittings that work for your dishwasher and, uh, and your sink and, and you put it together. I'm sure everybody has done this. Um, I do it all the time. When you get back to the store, you have everything that you need for a project and then you realize that you don't have everything you need for a project. What we didn't realize we didn't need, or we, we needed that we didn't have, is um, number one, this is a dual outlet T for underneath the sink. I didn't realize that we didn't have 
you know, already something set up for the dishwasher to go into. So we had to get one of these. Very inexpensive. Again, plumbing department, Lowe's or local hardware store. The other thing that we needed is because we're going to be plugging it in, we needed an outlet. So we have power that's already run underneath the sink. We originally put it there for the dishwasher and uh, potentially a garbage disposal. We have a septic system, so garbage disposals aren't good. You don't want to be putting a lot of food down into your septic system. So we never actually installed a garbage disposal. So there's just like a blank plate and behind that blank plate are wires. Um, so I had to go ahead and get a receptacle. These receptacles should be tamper resistant and water resistant. The other thing that you need to check if you are putting in an outlet, depending on what, what line you're connecting to for appliances, I like to use a 20 amp line. So you have to use a 20 amp circuit or outlet, receptacle, whatever it is you want to call it. And um, oh, it should be on a 12 gauge wire. If you've only got 14 gauge, make sure everything's 15 amp. So receptacle, receptacle cover, those were pretty much the other pieces that I had to acquire to install this. And then, you know, the dishwasher comes with a couple other parts to kind of help make everything happen. A little baggie here with stuff in it. I really don't, I really don't know. I, I think these clips go in through the top. When we set up our kitchen, we put it together temporarily. If you watch Reconstructing Spirit Hill, uh, you'll know that we built these countertops and just kind of set everything in place. It doesn't extend far enough because then we didn't have all the cabinets in place yet. We didn't know what size dishwasher we were going to have, all those things because we weren't doing that at the time. We will be kind of putting this here where we think it will go once we get the rest of the cabinets. I'm not going to bolt it to the floor or anything like that yet because I really don't know if this is going to be where it ends up or not. But um, the good thing about this is we will rebuild this wood countertop and take it all the way down. The wood countertops that we made have held up pretty good. This one uh, has a little bowing in it that that one doesn't have. There are a couple of reasons for that. One, when I built the countertop behind me, I didn't know what I was doing, so I took my time and I did it correctly. This one, I knew what I was doing, so I did it really fast. I was hurried, and I'll have to admit, it wasn't completely flat when I installed it. And once we get all this put in place, we'll probably rebuild another wood countertop. Uh, it'll be a little easier because I have a, a nice stencil already cut out, and then we're just adding length to it. But uh, that's a different project for a different day. So let's get to installing this thing. I hook the power up. <laughs> you got to get underneath it. needs to work out you do things yourself right okay this is the underside of a dishwasher if you haven't seen one before this is what it looks like the wires are coming out here this is where uh, you should wire up your electrical I would definitely have an elect electrical screwdriver when you do this because uh, something like that would be a lot easier I will be back in a minute See these electrical screwdrivers, they've got all the different screws and all the different sizes that you need. Plus, you can kind of use them just like that. I think, I haven't really read the instructions on how to install this, um, but I think if I remove this screw, this well, that did work. Okay. Instructions. Warning. I have a lot of warnings on the instructions. Shauna was nice enough to fold the pages over where it changes language. says to remove the terminal box. Okay. So, 
for that. Now it's coming apart. So you gotta remove this box, at least on these veneers. Now we put this through. I was worried about what I was gonna do about this, but these kind of kits, they already come with everything. You just push that right in there. We got a ground wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect ground wire because it's the easiest one. If you ever use these south wire screwdrivers, they're pretty amazing. You can do almost anything with them. Electrical. Voila, that part's done. And then I, I believe it's just black on black, white on white. I need to get myself a couple of um, these. They also came with it. Okay, so white. I like to kind of like twist these that are all frizzed up and make them look pretty. Screw that on. Okay, now we got the black. Now the next thing that I need is the cover back. You know what, there's part in the instructions that say to remove this front panel here. I would definitely suggest doing that. There we go. Okay. This just became a lot easier. So we actually didn't have to remove this external ground wire. So there we go. We've got our power cord connected. The next thing I'm going to do here is hook up my water line. Okay, so I'm doing all of this upside down so that you guys can see what it actually looks like. Um, to connect your water lines, you want to get these things tight, so it's, use a pair of pliers and really get, get it on there nice and snug. Um, now this water line just connects up under here. If these seals are in there crooked in any way, um, it could cause it to leak. You take your pliers, really try and get these things on there tight. As front panel that I took off, I would not put on until after you've had a chance to really get this thing set up and operating to make sure that you don't have any leaks under here. That's on there. And this is a six foot water line. I think it'll reach my sink from where I'm installing it. Um, if not, we're just gonna move it closer and then I'll end up getting a, a, an extension for it but um, I think it'll work. Now for the drain line, got this other hose back here and really need these clamps. There's a red and a green clamp. Not sure which one to use. It says to use the small clamp. I want to make sure I know where the large clamp flow goes so that I'm not doing this twice. I'm guessing the large hose clamp is going to go on the sink part. So, oops. Just go ahead and slide this down in here. And then we can push these sheets together as so tight we can get them. Feels pretty snug. I'm gonna take this clamp and uh, 
kind of squeeze it with the pliers and get the pliers on the thing. So that, this part here is going to run out the back to our sink drain. Got those two. Okay, so something that I didn't think about is that we have this piece right here. This piece is actually probably going to end up being our end piece to this entire countertop. So I don't want to drill a hole through this to run these pieces through. So what I'm actually going to do for now um, is, I don't even, the other problem I'm gonna have here is that my, my power cord is not gonna reach all the way down. Well, I'm gonna run these hoses across through the front here so because this is a temporary install and I'm temporarily going to use this outlet here. Now we'll go ahead and we'll hook up the outlet underneath the sink just so that you know, we could have it as part of our how-to video, but uh, because this is a temporary install until we finish our counters, um, I think I'm going to have to either hardwire this long-term and uh, just have a wire running underneath the cabinets into the box. For now, we're just going to run the drain hose and the, the water supply line in front of this cabinet down at the bottom, kind of snake it up in there uh, so that we don't have to drill a hole into the side here. So, um, the drain line, we've actually got a piece right here that I stuck on there when, before we had the dishwasher hooked up, we were having soapy water come out of, of the, where the, dish, the dishwasher drain hose should go into our uh, drain and it was coming out all over the place. So I temporarily stuck this thing in there. Ooh, it is pretty nasty looking now. Um, but as I said, I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting this in. We have had a 13 year old dishwasher that, it, you know, it works great. But once it got up into the teens, it slowly stopped cleaning as well. And uh, the other issue, with the, I think it just had better things on its mind to do. But the, uh, the decibel rating of the 13-year-old dishwasher is better than our seven-year-old dishwasher. We've had a seven-year-old dishwasher as well. But um, the, both of them kind of clank a little bit. First of all, I am 14 and you can do your own dishes, see daddy? Even though we're not completely ready to have this thing set up permanently, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing installed so that uh, things are a little quieter around dishwashing time. Oh, that's not good. That just pulled all the way out. I don't think that's supposed to do that. Let me go ahead and clamp this on. Okay, so that's on there. But this is our drain line, and the uh, whole thing just slid down on me. I don't think it's supposed to do that. But just push it back up in there nice and tight. Ooh. Not really sure if the plumbers completely had that in there correctly because, oh, yeah. I feel like this stuff should not be doing what it's doing. It's almost like it didn't tighten it down or something. It's nice, pretty chrome, but it wasn't staying in there, I think, the way it's supposed to. That sink's also a little crooked up top. I think when we redo these, I'm gonna push this back and see if I can't get these to adjust better. If you ever wanna clean out your trap, this is a trap, you just kinda unscrew these and it should slip out. But this whole thing shouldn't slip and slide. That's not... Okay. Now, to do the water line, I'm going to go ahead and turn this knob here to turn it off. Um, and then 
test it to make sure that I actually just turned that off. Hot, cold. Nothing coming out of cold, it's off. Okay, so it's probably real hard to see what I'm doing up in here, but the cold water line is the one that I'm going to be disconnecting. Loosey goosey, I think it goes that way. An adjustable wrench would be very helpful for this job. Now we just need to screw the sink back on here. We've got this one. Screw the uh, dishwasher feet on right here. Now we'll go ahead and screw this back on. Oh. I feel like I should check my pants. You always see those commercials, you know, with the plumber working underneath the sink and he's showing too much moon out the back. That's how I feel right now. I think everything's on there tight. This is about the time when we turn it on and kind of test things out. Okay, sink's on. Let me turn that off. And now that we kind of have that water on, I'm, I'm gonna go through and check and make sure that there's nothing leaking so far. It's sometimes it's best to go ahead and check these things before you turn the dishwasher on so that um, you can narrow your leaks down. In that. And right now I'm dealing with a fairly minor situation if something goes wrong. If I turn it on to test it, and I have drain leaks and incoming water leaks, then I've just got a big mess on my hands. We're looking under here, you can actually see right there where the water comes in. I don't feel any moisture. And droplets. So that's good. We have a pine floors throughout. If you haven't seen our video on installing those, that was a lot of fun. But with wood floors, you definitely do not want leaks. You, we might want to get a tray and just sit this on top of a tray. I had a client in real estate who had a small leak underneath his dishwasher, went down into the floor, got this floor joist. It was a mess. He had to fix it before he saw the house. So I don't see any leaks under there. I'm going to go ahead and run this power cord out the back side, I believe, and use one of our outlets up top to plug it in for now. Like I said, because of where the wire is, I may end up having to do a hard wire to the dishwasher. Um, let's see if I can slip it down. Yeah, see that five foot cord? Really doesn't get you very far. We're just making it barely up here to the top. <laughs> so as I give this a test run, um, number one, I'm gonna leave that bottom plate off so that I can see under there and make sure that everything is working the way that it should as it drains, etc. Uh, like I said, wood floors, I don't want any messes. Uh, I'm gonna make sure that there's nothing in here that is out of place. Let's hook this thing up. Make sure everything's in its right place. I, I really know enough about dishwashers to know that I wouldn't know if there was anything out of place. Okay, so, oh, I heard something beep. I would say low type. Now let's do normal for a test. Well, let's just give it the test. Why not? I want to make sure that it's getting hot. No? I don't... 
entertaining cycles. One hour wash. Why would we be entertaining with our dishwasher? Do that. Precision dry, high temp wash. I don't know what that word is. Something rinse. I don't know what a sandy. Four hour delay. I'm assuming that you would push to start. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, you can see the dent right there. And right there. That is, those dents cost somebody a lot of money. Checking everything out. So far, the water is going in just fine. I feel like this piece back here should have a clamp on it, but there wasn't a clamp before, and it came on there already. I guess we'll find out when the drain starts. So far, it is significantly quieter than our 13-year-old dishwasher. I mean, you could, you could hear things going on, but it's just the water, no clickety-clank. So I'm gonna let it do this for a little bit, and I just realized that there's a button over here that says uh, cancel drain. So I'll, I'll do that in a few minutes to just kind of drain it out and make sure that the drain lines are working out. Okay, so let's see what happens if we hit cancel drain. Several points on this drain line I wanna watch. I wanna watch down there, um, what comes out of the machine. This connection right here that we put together. I, ooh, there's water running through it. Yeah. It's in the leaks. And then right up under there where we hooked it to our sink. to make sure there's no leaks there. And all the other places where this fell apart as I was working on it, I guess that's an important thing to watch too. So everything seems to be working pretty good. Um, we've got our new Janair dishwasher kind of temporarily installed. Um, the biggest thing about this install is that it's gonna tip forward every time we open it, unless we remember to hold our hands on the dishwasher as we move it. Stay tuned, we'll probably do the final install and, um, and that one, I'm probably gonna end up hardwiring it. So if you have a hardwired dishwasher, we'll, uh, we'll change up how the wiring is done on it. But for now, this is it. Pretty simple. We'll, uh, I'm sure our 13 year old dishwasher will like the retirement that comes along with the new one. Put it. It's, it's not anchored because okay. we can't anchor it yet. It's wet inside. Well, I had to make sure it didn't leak. Okay. It's that bent piece of metal that I screwed back on the bottom. I need to investigate that, but minor detail. I'll Did just you, take it off for now. Um, you secured the uh, filters. Uh. What what filters? Are we serious? Yeah. I think filters. <laughs> Don't tip it. <laughs> this and this, those are filters. It's a dual filtration system. So they're not secured? No, you just, you're supposed to make sure that they are before you run it, or it will damage them. Well, I looked everything over in there. I'm sure everything's in its right place. I, I really know enough about dishwashers to know that I wouldn't know if there was anything out of place. Okay, so, oh, I heard something beep. Did they call call? No, seriously, I did. I looked everything over. But you didn't know that there were two filters? I did not. Did you read the instructions manual? No. Oh, that makes me nervous. <laughs> ah, oh, Maybe. buddy. <laughs> I'm not, but I, there, there was a drain line, a water line, and a power line. You know, with how much money 
you pay for things. You would think you would read the manual. Wakaya? You have a friend. You got a friend. Oh, I'm pushing buttons on accident. Sorry, don't do that. I did that. Yeah, I said on the video that it's um, a lot quieter than our 14-year-old th dishwasher. The decibel rating. Thank you, Abner. <laughs> Look, it's you strong boy. Thank you. That's a Abner obviously wants the 14-year-old washer back because that's the drying rack. You no, know, but it will be a lot quieter once we have it encased in this and a counter and cabinets. It'll be a lot quieter because that'll muffle the sound. Because we're hearing it really loud right here to the other water running. But once yeah. it's all enclosed, it'll more quiet. It is weird sounding because I'm not used to hearing it so clearly. And this is supposed to be ready to be very quiet. Abner. It's it's weird sounding because you're not used to hearing a mechanical dishwasher. Kaya, do you know when the last time we had a dishwasher was? The apartment, so like 2015. Is that right? Yeah, what year is it now? Uh, 2018. <laughs> wow. Three years, three years of dishes dedicated dishes service. By hand for three years. Oh, and Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, you still gotta rinse them to put them in there. We're just removing the stuff where you pick up the spongy thing. I'm just happy I don't have to wash silverware anymore. I dread silverware. Oh no, I'm still doing that. I can't. No, we're not. Don't open it away! Yep, see, that's gonna be a problem. Try to secure it. So I made a mistake. This dishwasher has a bunch of sensors in it that tell it whether or not it's doing a good job. And um, I installed the water line the way the instructions said to install the water line, but I decided to go back and reread the instructions, which I never really thoroughly read. And uh, at the very front of the booklet, it says water supply requirements. Um, why don't you tell them why you went back to read the instruction booklet? <clears throat> because it kept running. Um, as it turns out, you put in the hot water for the supply. See, I was thinking maybe like you just put in a water supply and then it heated the water to the temperature that it wanted it to. No, you have to do a hot water supply into the dishwasher. So we've been running this dishwasher trying to figure out why it's not completing a cycle this is why. So I am going to quickly just kind of move some things around and try it again. So I've disconnected from this um, cold water line. Now I need to connect to the hot water line. Go ahead and turn it off. Get that tied into the hot water line, and uh, we'll try to cycle again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me do the sensor wash since that's what we originally had. Huh? Precision dry, same rinse. 